The starting point for whales was a four-legged land animal that lived over 50 million years ago. But land animals were also the product of a transformation, a much earlier one. Hundreds of millions of years ago, there were no animals on land. Before then, all our distant ancestors lived in the water. So at some point, you had the shift from life in water to life on land. That's a huge change. It was the moment when fish crawled out of the water and onto land. If these early animals hadn't made the transition, we wouldn't be here today. And it's important to understand how and when and possibly where that transition took place. The first creatures to leave the water really started something. Their descendants eventually evolved into today's reptiles, birds, and mammals. And these creatures' common origins are still visible in their bodies. Just like us, they all have bodies with four limbs. They're all tetrapods. What that means is that all these different creatures are descended from a common ancestor which had something very similar or akin to, to limbs. Just what was that common ancestor? And how did it leave the water 370 million years ago? Those are the questions that paleontologists Neil Shubin and Ted Deschler are trying to answer. They think that the cliffs here in central Pennsylvania may offer some clues. All right, I think it's a good day for fossils. What do you say? Great day. Let's find some. All right. Hey, Doc. Hey, hey Doug. How you doing? Good. Good trip up. What'd you say we go over here? That's good. Get some good digging in today. An unlikely spot to hunt for early tetrapod fossils. But they're here because the rocks in these hills are just the right age, laid down during the period in Earth's history called the Devonian. Back in the Devonian, this place was very different. It was south of the equator. Remember, the continents are continually moving around. And back at this time, we're actually dealing with a much more tropical climate in Pennsylvania. Hundreds of millions of years ago, the fossils and sediments in these layers were collecting on the bottom of a stream. What we have here is a snapshot of, of life in a stream about 370 million years ago. These are fossilized, broken fossils of scales, of teeth. This little bone here, uh, it's a spine of a creature known as a spiny shark. Most of the fossils are too fragmented to be of much value. But in 1995, right at this spot, Deschler came across something he had never seen before. It was a small shoulder bone, but not from a fish. It was a tetrapod shoulder, 370 million years old. Shubin and Deschler had unearthed the remains of one of life's first four-legged creatures. It was the first evidence of these early tetrapods from all of North America. That made it very exciting. And there was another surprise. Since it was found in the stream bed, this tetrapod most likely lived in the water. And it's a very surprising discovery. It's not something we necessarily would have predicted. Why would an animal with limbs live in the water? Limbs were thought to have evolved for getting around on land. The old idea was that the fish came on shore first and then developed the legs. And what we now think is that the tetrapods developed the fingers first and then left the water. Jenny Clack of Cambridge University suspected that the theory taught in many textbooks was wrong. The story that you'll find in many of the old textbooks and the pictures that you'll see in the books, children's books, museum galleries, is a picture of a fish stranded 
in a drying pool trying to support itself out of water. And it looks really odd if you look at it objectively. Clack thought there had to be a better explanation. But where to look? Only a handful of early tetrapod fossils had ever been found, most of those in a remote part of Greenland at the turn of the century. All she had to guide her was a note, scribbled in a journal from a scouting trip to Greenland years earlier. It referred to tetrapod fossils on an unnamed mountain. Clack flew to Greenland to search for those bones. Eventually, we found the spot 800 meters up on the hillside. Clack returned with four tons of rock and spent the next four years drilling. At the end, she had the most complete early tetrapod skeleton ever found, and it forever changed the textbooks. One of the first things that we found was this forelimb. At the end of the animal's limb was an unmistakable array of bones. This was a hand. This is a, a life reconstruction. The artist is using imagination on the color scheme and on the eyes. But we think this is as accurate as you can get. The creature, named Acanthostega, was clearly a water dweller. It had a fish-like tail and gills for breathing in the water. But the ends of its arms were petal-shaped, possibly the first hands on Earth. This was a swimming creature. We don't know whether it could ever have come out on the land, but it certainly wouldn't have walked in the conventional sense. Basically, it's a fish with fingers. Clack's find was a scientific breakthrough. It proved that some fish had arms and legs in the water. So tetrapods didn't need to grow limbs after they got onto land. The limbs had already evolved and helped them survive out of the water. The basic pattern for limbs had been in place for millions of years. Here we have the fin of a 370 million year old fossil fish and an arm of a human. In a human arm, what you have is one bone, then two bones, the wrist, and the digits. In this fin, what do you have? You have one bone, two bones, even little bones that can be compared to a wrist, and then rods that face away uh, from the rest of the appendage itself, just like our fingers or toes. So you have, in a fish fin, already set up about 370 million years ago, many of the bones that are used in a tetrapod limb. With the basic pattern already there, the fin to limb transition took place in a series of small changes occurring over millions of years. There's really no goal to evolution. Evolution wasn't trying to make limbs. It wasn't trying to push our distant ancestors out of the water. What was happening was a series of experiments. In the crowded freshwater streams where tetrapods first evolved, the competition for survival was intense. These small streams were like an engine or a crucible of evolutionary change. Fish experimented with all sorts of survival strategies. Some became predators. The owner of this jaw was a 12-foot long killer. Its teeth were the size of railroad spikes. Smaller fish developed elaborate defenses, like this heavy armor. Others packed weaponry, like this sharp spike. It protruded from behind its owner's neck. These armaments were all tools for survival in a dangerous world. 
Perhaps their new arms and legs gave the first tetrapods another way to survive. It was to get out of the way. It was to get onto land. And what enabled those animals to get out of the way, that is, to get out of the water, were these new features, like limbs. Those that did escape found a new world filled with opportunity.